Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning and welcome on this, Chris, on this Christmas morning. <laughs> hasn't been a very long night for me. <laughs> welcome on this Easter morning <laughs> to everyone in the building and to everyone joining us uh, from their homes this morning online and on the telephone. It's a real privilege to be here together, so thank you very much. A few notices to say today is communion. The communion will be served to you in the pews. If you're in the building, if you're at home, please have some bread and some wine or grape juice ready when the time comes. The wine we use in the church is non-alcoholic. Uh, the bread we use uh, is got gluten in, but there is gluten-free bread available. If you just ask one of the servers, they will make sure that you get gluten-free bread brought to you. There is Sunday school today, unlike my mistake in the order of service. Uh, that's what I get for copying and pasting from last year's notices. Apologies for that. But there is Sunday school this week, but not for the next two weeks. Uh, so next week and the week after, there'll be no Sunday school. There is also creche available, if you wish. Uh, and if you go to the back, someone will help you out with that and show you where that is as well. Afterwards, there's tea and coffee and hot cross buns. Indeed. And I've been told they're the nice hot cross buns as well. So please come along and enjoy that. Before you go back and enjoy your Easter meal with everyone else, um, come along and have some tea, coffee, and a hot cross bun. Also, after tea and coffee, I'm on annual leave until the following Monday, Monday the 8th. If there's any problems during my absence, please contact Marilyn. She'll be more than happy to help you um, and pass you on to whoever needs to help you out. Uh, Graham and Mary are very kindly leading worship next Sunday in my absence, so please come along and support them as well. And if you're here for the first time or the first time in a long time, there's no offering collected during the service, but there's a QR code and there's also a contact machine at the back and also a basket should you wish and if you're able to give towards the life and work of the church. That's all that I would like to say, I think. So we say together our call to worship. This day dawns brightly. Christ is risen. Come open your hearts and spirits to the joyous good news. And so we stand to sing our first hymn printed in the order of service. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia.
What a great start to Easter morning. So we come together for our prayers. And as always, I say you're welcome to join in saying the words of the Lord's Prayer with me at the end. Whichever version you wish to say, using the words printed if you wish, whether you wish to say in English or in a different language, shout out loud or just in the quietness of your heart. Let us join together as we pray. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, we greet you. Your hands still have the holes within them. Your feet are wet from the early morning dew. And yet, with the memory of our names undimmed by the three days of death, you meet us risen from the grave. We fail to understand how, we puzzle at the reason why, but you have come not to answer our questions, but to show us your face. You emerge into the brokenness of our world to call us by name so that we might stop, turn around, and shout Rabboni, teacher. As we wipe away our tears of doubt and fear and run towards your arms of love, ready to be sent into the world by you. Risen Lord Jesus, we come to worship you as the darkness of Calvary is lifted by the light of your love breaking through from the tomb below. We give thanks that the cross is empty and that the tomb is empty for you have risen and you are alive still today. We come acknowledging that our sins nailed you to the cross. We come acknowledging that our wrongdoing caused you to gasp for air. We come acknowledging that it was your love for us that broke you free from the tomb. So may we meet you in this hour and know the joy of your risen love, a love that taught us to say together those precious and eternal words, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If there's any little people hiding in the back and want to come forward so you can see, then you're very welcome to come forward. But you don't have to. Do you want to come forward? Come on then. We can make some space. Guys, do you want to come and sit down here? Do you want to come, Casey? Not yet. (laughs) Always one, isn't there? Right. I wanted to talk to you about the Easter story, and I've got a little bag here that hopefully will remind me what to say, and also perhaps it will help remind all of us about the Easter story. And so this little bag starts off green, because green reminds us that last Sunday, does anyone remember what happened last Sunday? What happened last Sunday? Palm Sunday. So we had the green palm leaves that they cut from the trees, and they waved, and they put on the ground, and they said, hallelujah! And they said, that is the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so remember the joy of the crowd and the fact that Jesus rode into Jerusalem. But then you see, we go further on in the story. And then we have the blue bag. Remember how Jesus was in a room with all his friends. And he got down onto his knees and he started to wash their feet. And he took a towel that was dried around, uh, tied around his waist and he dried their feet because he came not to be served but to serve others. And then later remember how in that same meal he took some bread, which we're going to do later, and he broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. And he took a cup and he said, this is my blood shed for you. And he shared it with his friends and they ate and they drank, and Jesus said, whenever you're doing it, you've got to remember me. But the story doesn't end there yet, because then it goes into something else. 
then we have blank. Because we remember how Jesus then went off and he went into the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed and he said to his disciples, stay awake, stay awake with me. And do you know what they all did? That's right. They were all sleeping and they couldn't stay awake. And then we remember the black of the darkness that Judas came and said, that's the one you want to the Romans and they took him away. And that's when he then went to the trial and that's when he was then sent to the cross. So it was a very dark day. But it doesn't end there yet, my bag. My bag carries on. It's a special bag, this you see, because then we've got the red and we've got the cross. So what do you think the red might remind us about? He was crucified. He was crucified. So what's the red when he was crucified? What's the red part? Blood. So the red reminds us of the blood of Jesus on the cross when he was nailed there nailed to the cross for us and he hung there because of all the bad things that we've done and all the bad things we're going to do yeah he, he did he had thorns on his head he had a crown didn't he made up of spiky thorns yeah and then we have more in the bag how many bits of this bag are there there's loads there, w- there might be in a second <laughs> You know, some people just shouldn't look ahead. (laughs) So then we've got the white. Because Jesus was taken down from the cross and he was put in white bandages and wrapped up and put in a borrowed tomb. It wasn't even his own tomb. It was someone else's. And he was put in there, wrapped up, and they got a big stone and they rolled it over and they locked his body inside the tomb. And no one could open up that tomb. That's right. That's right. That's why I have Easter eggs. Reminds about the stone that was rolled away. And then what's the last color? Because you already said. It's yellow. Because we remember the joy of today. We remember how Jesus rose that tomb which could never be opened was suddenly opened and there was no one in it and those white bandages were suddenly all rolled up and neatly folded and Jesus wasn't there, his body, because he had risen and he was in the garden and he said to Mary, Mary, and she turned around and saw Jesus. And then he went on to show himself to lots of other people so that everyone might know and that we might still believe today the joy of Easter. And that is my special bag to remind us of the Easter story. But you already told me the next part of my uh, story, which is about the Easter egg. Because there's lots and lots of Easter eggs. I want to say there's 200, but a few might have gone missing in the process. Not eaten by me, I promise you. I wouldn't dare eat any eggs. (laughs) Don't listen to what that organ says. (laughs) However, we have Easter eggs because you're right, it reminds us of the stone that was there in front. But also these eggs have got nothing inside them because they remind us that the tomb is empty. So when you eat the chocolate and you bite in, there's not a big solid center. It's got nothing in it. So remember that Jesus isn't in the tomb anymore. So all the adults are going to, in a minute, stand up and they're all going to sing really, really, really loudly because it's Easter Sunday. And they're going to sing so loudly that anyone who's walking their dog outside is going to hear them singing. Isn't that right, big people? Thank you. There we go. And all around the church, even down in the bottom there, and maybe at the back, there are some chocolate eggs. They're not the eggs hanging from the trees in the arches. I just need to say that. Leave those. That's 
the flower ladies have worked very hard to make this church look so beautiful today um, with the crosses and with the flower display. So let's not break them up. I don't want to upset them. I don't think you do either. So we're all going to stand up and sing a song we practiced a couple of weeks ago, See What a Morning. As we do, I've got some baskets, and if we can work together, we're going to collect all the Easter eggs. We're going to bring them back here, and then you might get one. And then after church, you might get some more as well. We're going to make sure all the big people get one as well. How's that sound? Okay. Yeah? So we're going to stand up and sing um, Older People, See What a Morning, and all the younger people come and get a basket, work together, and go collect some eggs. And maybe a few adults might want to just supervise. So, well done, boys and girls. I think this year we might have found all of them. Last year, Dorothy Ann was still giving me Easter eggs for a few weeks after Easter when she kept on finding them. But I think this year, oh no. Oh, I see two more. Go look by the war memorial. Now I think we might have them all. Okay, pop them in there. That's my basket. Is it your basket? Okay. All right, let's go sit down.
So, well done, boys and girls, for finding them all. We are going to give a hat to take over. There's a hat for you to take over to eat, not for you to eat, for the children to eat. Just clarifying that. Boys and girls, go have lots of fun if you want in Sunday school, and we'll make sure that any leg eggs left over will come back at the end of the service. If there's any other boys and girls that want to go to Sunday school, you're more than welcome. If you wish to stay, you're also welcome, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Good morning. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Third time lucky. So I'm going to read the first part, and then if you all repeat the bits in bold. Um, the first reading is Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2, and then 14 to 24. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The Lord has punished me severely but he did not give me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my servant. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Wasn't that beautiful? The second reading is from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. The resurrection of Jesus. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, to whom Jesus, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. Guess who wrote this book? The one who outran him. <laughs> he bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Praise be to God. Thank you, Celeste, for that. Come now to our next hymn. I had my heart broken this morning, ladies and gentlemen, because I love this hymn, but I've been told by the choir and by our esteemed organist that the tune that I had picked was not known. So we're going to learn the new tune later on this year, so when we come round to sing it again, you will agree with me that the tune that I chose is far superior Unfortunately, today we have to sing an inferior um, tune for this hymn. However, it's still to the glory of God. So we stand to sing, Christ is alive, let Christians sing. Thank you. 
Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. Let us pray. Well, God, we give thanks that you are indeed risen. We give thanks that you are with us now wherever you find us, here in the building and in our homes and out and about in the world wherever we go. Lord, wherever you find us this morning, open our hearts, our eyes, our minds to you, Lord. Fill us with your spirit, a spirit of love, a spirit of acceptance, a spirit of hope. So bless our words, bless our thoughts. In Jesus' name, amen. Darkness can be a scary place to find ourselves in, can't it? When we're enveloped in that pitch black darkness, we find ourselves stumbling and falling as we inch our way forward, very uncertain. We bang our heads, we stub our toes because we can't see what is in front of us or for that matter, what is behind us. I don't know if you've ever been on a night trek. I remember when I was in school, every year our boarding housemaster arranged a nighttime game of capture the flag. As we entered the house, there was no artificial lights on at all. Outside was pitch black. It was strange how once familiar lawns became rather scary, how those once familiar corridors and bedrooms turned into confusing mazes as we inched our way further forward into the house. Every step required effort and patience and hope that we wouldn't fall into some or other trap. I can't help but think that the world is filled with darkness at the moment, causing us to stumble forward as once familiar ways become impassable. Just look, for example, at the war raging in Ukraine, still two years on from the current invasion of the war has been in there for some many years. I was looking up some statistics about the war in Ukraine and found as a result of the shelling and fighting, an estimated 3.7 million people have been driven from their homes. 3.7 million and are internally displaced. On top of this, there's nearly 6.5 million people who were lucky enough to get over the border and have sought refuge elsewhere. A lack of power, water, health care, social protection, heating are just some of the obstacles that those who are left in Ukraine have to contend with. Forced to live in damaged buildings mean there's an estimated 14.6 million people who need humanitarian help in Ukraine today as they live in the dark fog of war. What about the darkness of Gaza, where an estimated 1.5 million people in Rafa have fled to find shelter? Yet children, women, and men are living hour to hour with the pain of hunger and the fear of death. Day after day, parents try and find food but return empty-handed. Formula is almost non-existent, and parents are forced to find alternatives which are well unsuitable let's say, for tiny babies. And so there's no option but to watch as their children become increasingly weak and vulnerable to disease. It's believed that the entire population of Gaza, 2.2 million people, are experiencing food insecurity at crisis levels or above. With just a trickle of aid coming into the country, some families share just one can of food every 48 hours as they live under the cloud of the darkness of war. What about Afghanistan facing so many problems due to political instability, oppression, floods, earthquakes and disasters? The World Food Programme says that every single province in Afghanistan Every single province is in crisis or in worse levels of food insecurity. Their latest assessment shows over half of families do not have enough food to eat each day. 
These include vulnerable communities experience emergency levels of food insecurity and women, or well, women are being increasingly pushed out of public life. These are but three examples of the darkness and oppression that is enveloping our world today. Yet I can't help but remember on this Easter Sunday that it was in the darkness of that first Easter morning that something truly, truly remarkable happened. Sometime in those pre-dawn hours of that Sunday morning, a great mystery transpired in the secrecy of the night as everyone else slept. There was no sunlight to illuminate the mystery. There was no one present to witness the event. And even now, over 2,000 years later, no human narrative can ever fully contain it. Yet it was there in the holy darkness, shielded from our eyes, that the greatest gift that the world was ever given happened. In the secrecy and darkness of the tomb, God worked in secret to bring life out of death. From the darkness of the cross to the darkness of the tomb, God saved the world. It was in the darkness of that first Easter morning that we're told that while it was still dark, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. It was in the darkness that Mary ran back and we are told that she went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. It was in the darkness that we are told how Peter and the other disciple John set out and went towards the tomb. It was in the darkness that the disciple bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there but did not go in. It was in the darkness that Simon Peter dared to enter the tomb and saw those linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings but rolled up in a place by itself. It was in the darkness that the two disciples returned to their homes. It was in the darkness. It was in the darkness that Mary Magdalene chose to stay put. Even after the two disciples left her, she chooses to stay in the darkness of the moment. Nadia Boltz Weber, the Lutheran minister and author, says that Mary remains present to what is real, what is actually happening, and does so even when what is real feels unbearable. And so it is from the darkness and in the darkness that Jesus comes into the darkness of the moment and calls Mary by her name. As we peer into the darkness of our world today and see only confusion and pain and hurt and war and climate chaos and destruction, we need to dare to stay in the uncomfortableness awkwardness of the moment and allow our eyes, not only our eyes to open but also our ears as we see and hear Christ's call. For those who are living in the darkness of war, in the darkness of illness, of trauma, of pain, infertility, to name but a few, it can feel like there is no end to it all. There is no resurrection. And yet even in the midst of all of this, there is hope. 
Because in the darkness of that first Easter morning, Jesus rose from the dead and is now here beside us, behind us, and before us. We must not allow us, as the Archbishop of Canterbury said, to allow despair to poison our outlook on the world. It is a time of terrible conflict and danger, but our faith in Christ, our faith is in Christ, the peacemaker and reconciler. And so this Easter morning, this week, this month, this year, and for all the days of our lives, I pray that Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead and left the darkness of the tomb, will lead us into new life, new light, and new hope. I pray that his light will shine in our lives so that we might see him and know him in those dimly lit areas of our world. May we meet him in the shadows of despair. May we feel him in those hard places of life. May we dare to linger, as I said before, in the darkness of the world the darkness that we find ourselves in. As we dare to listen for his voice, calling out our name. Because out of the darkness of oppression, of occupation, extortion, poverty, fear, and uncertainty, Jesus broke free from the chains of death for his love could not, nor can it ever be extinguished by the darkness of the world, because Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. And so we prepare for communion now as we sing our next hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns, the Lamb Upon His Throne. Please remain standing if you're able as we say the words in bold. We believe that Jesus, God unbounded, directed by love, accepted restraint and lived a fully human life to begin the healing of the world. 
Alleluia. We believe that Jesus, God unbounded, sustained by love, accepted restraint, and died on the cross to draw the sting of death. We believe that Jesus, God unbounded and powered by love, accepted restraint and was in tombs to break the grip of evil. We believe that Jesus, God unbounded, directed, sustained and empowered by love threw off all restraint and rose from the dead to transform the world through life. Please be seated. This morning we stand in the resurrection garden of God, a place bathed and shaped by love and ripe with its potential. And this is the table of the risen Jesus, a place fashioned and furnished by love and rich with promises. So come, whether you have seen and believed or perhaps are dubious and doubting still. Whether you confess confidently or with a fragile, fearful heart, come and share these gifts of grace. Encounter Christ and be healed by love and transformed by life. We are told before the bright dawn in the garden, in which love was resurrected, before the cold silence of the tomb, by which love was swallowed, before the black horror of the cross on which love was broken, before the bitter struggle of another garden, through which love affirmed its choices, Jesus shared a final supper with his friends, blessed and broke bread and poured out a cup of wine, saying, Whenever we eat and drink, we are to remember him. For these tokens of bread and wine are the confirmation of the life he had lived and a sign of what was to come. So we too, recalling that moment and honouring his life, come to break bread and to share wine together. And in that same way that before he shared the meal with his friends, Jesus prayed, let us do likewise, let us pray. Risen Lord Jesus, that night in the upper room with your disciples, as you looked around the table, you knew who would betray you, you knew who would desert you, you knew who would be too weary to watch for you, yet you looked at each of your friends with love and gave them and us this celebration that speaks of your love for us, just as we are, in our weakness in our failings, in our weariness, still we are loved, still you hold out for us, food that unites us with you and with each other, food that restores our souls and nourishes our spirit. As we share this feast today, may we know the depth of healing, the depth of loving, the depth of restoration that is possible in the new life you offer. And we join our voices with that of creation and with all those who bear witness across the world and throughout the ages to your transforming power, saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Risen Lord Jesus, may we know your healing on us and on the world that we serve. May we know your love flooding our souls with warmth and overflowing into the communities we serve. And may we know our faith restored in the joy and wonder of the empty tomb to go and make a difference in our lives and throughout the world, in the lives of those who live in fear, those who live without hope, those who live without love, those who live in the darkness of this world. 
Risen Lord Jesus, as we feel your resurrection stir our souls now, remind us that your love still changes everything. Breathe your spirit into this bread and this wine that as we share together we may know your risen power, enabling us to go and breathe new life into your world. Fill our hearts with your life-giving spirit. Hear our prayers, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so Jesus, looking into the eyes of those he knew would fail him, took bread and he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, already tainted by betrayal, and spoke of forgiveness and of drinking the cup in the new kingdom. And so he said to his friends, come, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In this bread and in this wine are our risen Lord, who offers us new life today. We do this to remember him. Jesus, love resurrected, comes to us now in the garden, offering these signs of healing and hope and calling us onward into transformation. So see the risen Lord this day, striding towards you, holding out life in all its fullness. So come, eat and drink his wonderful gifts.
Jesus came into the midst of confusion, into the midst of fear and pain and darkness, and simply said, peace be with you. So let's turn to those around us, and however we feel comfortable, let us share the peace of our risen Lord with one another, saying, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Let us pray. Loving God, your love is as close to us as our own hands and feet. People who need your love are as close to us as the people beside us, behind us, and in front of us. So send us out into your world to love one another because we know that you love us. Show us where we are needed and how we can make a difference, realizing perhaps that that need might be closer than we think. Help us to be part of the change in the world, a change brought about that sees new life given to us on the cross. Help us to live for you, Jesus Christ, wherever we go, and whatever we do, amen. And so we stand to sing that classic hymn, Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son.
Jesus, love resurrected, has met us once again in the garden and transformed us with life. Jesus, life in all its fullness now calls us onward into the powerful reality, the challenging potential and the vibrant possibilities of the life of his kingdom. So as you go out into God's world this week, be the Easter people. Be those who say, why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not there. He is risen and here. Be ready to be surprised with what God will do next. Look for the risen Christ in those you meet. Let the Holy Spirit nudge you and guide you. The tomb is empty because Jesus is out in the world. And now we must go out into the world also. May the joy and the wonder of that first Easter morning live in your hearts today and every day. So go with the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May his blessing be upon you, those whom we love and those whom we struggle to love. Amen.